In this video, we will show you how to automate deploying your applications to Cloud Foundry with Visual Studio Team Services. We will use a Cloud Foundry sample application from GitHub. This happens to be using Ruby Rails. You could do the same for any Cloud Foundry application built on Node.js or Go, a Java Spring application or other frameworks. The prerequisites are to create a Team Services account. Set up a build agent. The build agent can be installed on Windows, Mac, or Linux. On the build agent, you will have to install the Cloud Foundry command line interface, which is available on GitHub as well. We are going to use Pivotal Web Services as our Cloud Foundry instance in this demo. You can use any Cloud Foundry instance that you have deployed to Azure, AWS, or your own server. Foundry extension is available on the Visual Studio Team Services Marketplace. You can reach the Marketplace by clicking this icon and selecting Browse Marketplace from inside your account. We are going to search for the Cloud Foundry extension in the Marketplace and install it. This extension is going to install two build tasks which will help you automate your build. Now let's create a build definition to push the sample Cloud Foundry Ruby application to our Pivotal Web Services. We will do this by selecting the Build tab on Visual Studio Team Services and click on the plus button. Select an empty definition. Select Remote Git Repository since our code is not on Visual Studio Team Services. We could use GitHub, but that is mainly for organizational accounts. I'm going to select the default pool against which I have configured a Mac agent and installed the Cloud Foundry command line interface on it. Now for the repository, we have to create a connection to the external Git repo. So we'll click on Manage and add a new external Git repository endpoint. I'm going to call this my Ruby Cloud Foundry app. I need the URL, which is going to be the remote Git repo URL. I'll copy it. And we do not have to provide any credentials because it's a public repository. Once I've added the remote Git repo connection, I have it now visible in my build definition. And I'm going to save my definition and call it CF ruby.ci. We will add the Cloud Foundry build task to the build steps by clicking on Add Build Step, selecting the Deploy category, and adding the Cloud Foundry task. We have to set up the connection endpoint to our Cloud Foundry URL. So we're going to click on Manage, create a new generic service endpoint. I'm going to call this my Pivotal Web Services endpoint and provide the URL, the username, and the password. Now, if we go back to the build definition, we will see the Pivotal Web Services Cloud Foundry instance in the endpoint. Now, I would like to use the manifest file to do the deployment, and my manifest file is called manifest.yaml. So I'm going to just specify that and save my build definition and queue it up. At this point, we see that the build is looking for an agent and it's going to start running on it. We will get the command line output to give us real-time progress. We find that our build has succeeded. So if we go back to the Pivotal Web Services, we see that a new app called CF Rails has been deployed. So if I click on the link, I see the sample application from GitHub has been successfully deployed using Visual Studio Team Services. Cloud Foundry task provides additional deployment options if you choose not to use a manifest file. There are also ways to bind to existing services or create new user-defined services. The connection settings exposes ways to target a particular organization or space as part of your Cloud Foundry deployment. We also have a utility task which will allow you to run any Cloud Foundry command line interface command as part of the build process. This can be used to run commands like CF create service to create a service. 
or delete services or delete your app before deploying to it, etc. Hope you will try out the Cloud Foundry extension for Visual Studio Team services. The code is on GitHub. Feel free to look at the code and use it to build your own team services extensions. Any issues or suggestions, please reach out to us. Thank you.